What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I wanna talk about functions with Python. All right, in the last video we looked at FizzBuzz, we played around with it a little bit. In this video, we wanna to start to move into more intermediate to advanced topics by looking at functions. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off memberships, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for a one-time fee of just $27, which is insanely cheap. Okay, functions. So a function is like a little program inside of your program, and it doesn't get run automatically. It only gets run if you call it, and we'll see what that means in just a minute. But Functions are really sort of the beginning of more advanced stuff in programming as a whole, not just Python. And some programming languages call them methods. Uh, I was a long time Ruby programmer and Ruby calls them methods. So from time to time, I might call them methods. If I do, I mean functions, you know what I'm talking about. But like I said, a function is just a, fun a program inside of your program. And we've actually been dealing with functions throughout this whole series. You just didn't notice. So like print, that's a function, right? And functions all kind of look like this. They, they have the name of the thing and then they have these parentheses. And then inside of the parentheses, you pass in arguments. In our case, you know, it would be like, hello world, right? And then the function does with this argument, whatever the function is supposed to do. In this case, this is the print function. So it prints out the argument that you pass into it. Right. Pretty simple. Uh, you know, we've seen all kinds of things like that throughout this series. That's not really what I want to talk about in this video. In this video, I want to show you how to start building your own functions, how to create your own functions. And they're really easy to do. You just define them. And let's create one called name it. And then you always put the little parentheses and then the colon. Now, just like an if else statement, a conditional statement, just like a while loop, it's the same format, it's the colon, and then you know you just do stuff. And everything in your function has to be indented, just like with our, our loops, just like with our if statement. This is a common Python thing, you know, tabs are important. And, and again, just to say it again, this is not spaces, this is, we're hitting the tab key on our keyboard. Or if you just hit enter inside of this thing, it'll do it for you probably in your, whatever text editor you're using. So up here, well, let's just let's just do something. Let's go print. Um, hello. Oh, we need some quotation marks. Hello. And that's it. Right. So that's fine. This works. But up here, one thing that I sort of left off is you can pass stuff into your function. Remember, when we had print, we're passing this parameter into the function. Well, just like just like that, you can pass things into your functions that you create. And to do that, you create just a fake variable name, a placeholder variable. And um, let's just call this name, right? So here we can kind of concatenate and then type in name. So what do we expect this to do? We expect it to print out hello, John, hello, Bob, hello, whatever name you pass into it. So if we save this and run it, probably not surprisingly, nothing happens, right? That's because we haven't actually done anything with our function yet. We've created it, it exists, but we're not using it yet. So to use a function that you've created, you just name it, <laughs> name it, you type the name of it, and then you put these things and that's it. Now you also need to pass something in. So for instance, if we want to pass in John, we would do that. So if we save this and run it, it says, hello, John. Now check this out. If we leave this off, this John thing, and we just run the function. If we save this and run this, we're going to get an error because our function that we've created expects a parameter to be passed in one parameter, this name. Here, we're not passing anything in. So it throws an error. So, you know, we need to pass something in. Now I've called this name. 
you can call this anything you want, X. You just have to then change that to X, right? Um, so, you know, you probably want to name these things what they are. In this case, we're passing a name in here. So I'm just going to call the variable name just sort of makes sense. So we've done now one thing we've passed one parameter into our function, we can have many parameters, we can go um, first underscore name, comma, last. That's a lowercase l underscore name. And then down here, we could go first underscore name, plus let's put a space and then last underscore name. Now here, same thing, if we save this and run it, we're going to get an error again. Right? Why? Well, now our function is expecting two parameters, first name and last name, and we've only passed it one. So we need to pass it two parameters. So John and elder, uh, first name becomes John, last name becomes elder. How do we know that? It just goes by order. So this is the first thing we listed. This is the second thing we listed. This is the first variable. This is the second variable. They just pair up like that. So that's pretty simple. Alrighty, so let's save this and run it. And hopefully, hello, John Elder. Very cool, very easy. Um, very kind of neat. Now we can change this. Let's change this to math it, right? And let's change this to num1 and num2. And let's get rid of all of this stuff. And inside of here, we could go num1 plus num2, right? And here we can go what? Nine and one. So just like anything with Python, you can use strings, you can use numbers, you can use, you could pass in um, lists, you can pass, pass in dictionaries into your function right here if you wanted to. Whatever you want to do, it's really cool. So we need to change this from name it to math it. All right, so we're going to call this math it function. I don't know where I got that name. And we're going to pass two numbers, a nine and a one. And num one becomes nine, num two becomes two. Then we're going to add these two together and print them out to the screen. So let's save this. And if we ran it, if we did it correctly, boom, we get 10. Very, very cool. Very, very fun. Now, let's go ahead and, well, okay, let's just keep it like this. Now, this is a very basic function. And this is how you start learning about functions. But more likely than not, you're not going to really want to print inside your function. What you really want to do is return. Right? Now, return is different than print print just prints onto the screen, obviously, return just returns, whatever outcome of your function is, right. So in this case, we're taking num one and num two, and we're adding them. So this is going to return 10, right? So if we save this, very interesting, nothing's going to happen. Well, it doesn't appear that anything's happened, because all it's doing is returning it, it's not doing anything with it, it hasn't, it's not printing it to the screen, it's not doing anything. So if we want to actually print this to the screen, then we would go print and wrap all of this in our print function. Why would we do it this way? Well, this gives us more control, right? Before, no matter what we did, it was just going to print this to the screen. And maybe you want that maybe you don't, maybe you want the outcome of your function, but you want to do something else with it, right? This is how you do it using return. This is the better way to do it. This is the best practices way to do it. So now if we save this and run it, we get 10, it's printing it to the screen. Now that's not all you can do, you can do anything you want. That's the beauty of this, right? Um, we might take this and let's create a variable called outcome. Right? And now we can set outcome equal to this. Now, If we save this and run it again, nothing's going to happen. Because we've all we've done here is we've assigned the outcome this return result into this variable, we haven't done anything with that variable. Right. So maybe we want to print that variable. We could do that. So now if we save this and run it, it'll print out 10 to the screen. Right. So 
Why? Why do we care? Well, maybe we want to do stuff with that outcome. Maybe we want to then take that times 100, right? Or times 20. I don't know. If we did that, we can very easily. Now it becomes 200, right? Um, we couldn't do that before when this was print, right? If we just run this, we're going to get all kinds of messed up stuff, right? It printed out 10, but then we got an error for the other thing, right? So you're almost always going to want to return instead of print from your from your uh, function, right? So one, one last thing I want to show you really quickly is let's take this and let's put it up here. We want to print the outcome um, of this function just like we did earlier, but I've put it now above the function itself. So if we save this and run it, I think you could probably guess, but maybe not, we get an error. Why? Well, actually, this is sort of confusing. Let's instead, let's just print this. We want to print this, wrap this in the print function, copy, come up here, save it. Same deal though, if we try and run this, we're going to get an error. Why? Well, Python, the program flow of Python is it starts at the top of the program and it goes down line by line and it executes each line one at a time. So in our program here, we've got comment, 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 comment. We are importing this OS and clearing the screen, comment, 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 print math it, right? So our Python goes, wait, what's math it? Well, we know it's a function we've created down here, but up until now, Python has only got to line 14. And above line 14, there is no mathit function. So it has no earthly idea what we're talking about here. Mathit, I've never heard of that, it's saying. And so we get an error. So your functions always need to be printed on the screen before you actually call them. So it's sort of a best practice to just anytime you have a bunch of functions, just put them very first right at the top of your program, whatever program you're creating, define all your functions right away. Because remember, when Python reads a function, it doesn't actually execute the function until you call it right here, right? So it just reads it into memory and it has it in there. So then later on, when you call that function, Python's like, oh yeah, I remember that function. We talked about that earlier. It knows what you're talking about. So kind of interesting. And uh, that's functions. So Functions are really the kind of the start of more advanced coding. I kind of mentioned that earlier. So from here on out, we're going to start looking at more interesting, more uh, more advanced topics, I guess. Uh, but once you understand functions, man, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. You can do anything you want with functions. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube to get $22 off membership. So you pay just $27 to access all my courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 50,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.